Thank you, brother. Very sobering. Sobering words. Again and again and again, the Scripture declares to us, Thus says the Lord God, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. Who can proclaim as I do? And let him declare it, set in an order for me, since I appointed the ancient people. The things that are coming and shall come, let them show these to them. Do not fear, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. There is there a God besides me. Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. Now the words of Scripture, of course, are given to us as a witness and a testimony. Those are the words of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 44. And then here in Matthew 24, where our Lord is answering the brothers' questions about the signs of the times. Tell us, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? The end of the age. And he warns them, take care that no one deceive you. And close to the end then, he says, see... I have told you beforehand. Yeah. So at key prominent places in the record, our Savior has revealed to us that we be able to lift up our heads, to open our eyes, and to sharpen our hearing about these matters of His doing, the unfolding of His will and purpose. The Lord's hand, of course, is not short. He is able to save. He is saving His own, making them a people for His own possession, teaching them to deny that which is corrupt and destroy and enabling them to be diligent to add to and increase in, in fellowship with Him the good things that He has granted them. So this is what we give ourselves to, brethren. And we are glad to be informed that God is undergirding us, His people, wherever they are in the earth, is undergirding and supporting them and this false church that he's allowed to arise is part of that undergirding and support. In that those who are none of his are drawn away, are drawn away to those things. Attracted to those things. They have an appetite for those things. So we don't have to deal with them. In uh, the assembly of the saints who love the truth, who've received the love of the truth, we don't have to deal with that. We don't have to fight with that. We can, you might say, caucus and sequester ourselves and give attention to the uh, eternal things, set our hearts and minds on things above, and not be distracted by those things which shall pass away. Behold, he has told us ahead of time Amen. that he's calculated these things. All of these things are, 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 account, are accounted for in the unfolding of his will and purpose. They're not outside at all. Our brother very ably uh, reminded us, and this is what I've heard uh, during my short life, that you know the Roman church, oh, that's them. That's them. It's a Roman church, you see. Well, it's not just them, is it? Not at all. Well, they're, you might say, at this juncture, just holding on by the skin of their teeth. They have been humiliated. They have been unmasked again and again and again. In, in just the last several years, what's really happening inside that abomination 
And yet these things continue, don't they? Where the, where the world is welcomed and invited in. And the, and the methods of the world are uh, freely and openly used, flagrantly used. So, uh, the, Lord has, the Lord has informed us about these things. We're not surprised. But beyond that, he's informed us of himself and his will and purpose. And that's what we embrace. All who love the truth embrace the revelation that God has given in the testimony of his own son. And since he has done this, we can hear his voice and follow after him, who is the great shepherd of the sheep who laid down his life for the sheep, who gave himself as a sacrifice to purchase the sheep to himself. He rose up to defend them from the enemy and laid down his life, allowed himself to be struck down, gave himself for the sheep. And now he's working, of course, since he was a prince of life. Death could not hold him. He's returned again from the dead with the keys of death and the grave. And he lives forevermore. And is now administering his Father's will in his people. Amen. To make them prepared. Mm -hmm. To make them prepared. So this is why then uh, we give ourselves to these things. Uh, we know that there are are many uh, who would be stunned to hear these words. Absolutely stunned. How could this be? What kind of group is that anyway? We simply love the truth. The truth that Jesus has delivered to his people down through the ages and down through the generations. And those who have had to deal with Babylon in its uh, various forms, at the height of its strength, have not been ashamed to stand up and to declare in public what they saw and what they heard. Martin Luther and others down through the ages seeking to snatch the sheep from the teeth of the wolf, yeah. so to speak. They paid a dear price, a dear price for that. Brother John Huss, William Tyndall, burned at the stake, hanged, suffering every form of abuse, hunted like an animal, betrayed, handed over to their enemies. Those are only a few. Those are just a few who were who were abused, attacked and abused by people who claimed to be God's people. Just as the Master was. Just as the Apostle Paul was. How dare you speak that way to God's high priest? Is that any way to answer God's high priest? Those words, see those words were both used against the Master and the Apostle Paul. As they faced them, personally faced these men who appeared to have sway over their lives. Mm -hmm. But of course, as the master said to Pilate, you would have no power over me at all, except it had been given to you from above. Behold, I have told you ahead of time. See? Mm -hmm. He told the disciples, I tell you this now, so that when it comes to pass, you'll yeah, you'll know. This was that. So when all of these things fell together then for the brethren, on the day of Pentecost, oh, they're rejoicing. <laughs> he was delivered up, see? He wasn't taken away. He was delivered up. And he has been delivered again, of course, according to the promise and the will of God. God did not allow his Holy One to undergo decay, you see. Yeah. Amen. And God will not allow his people and his church to be trodden underfoot. Mm -hmm. He will not allow it. He's told us ahead of time, brethren. Yeah. 
so that we are, so that we are able to take necessary uh, precautions, if you will, find a, a, a covert in which to hide, a place of refuge, a shadow in a dry and weary land, find rest and refuge, because we know His wrath comes. But we have the hiding place. <laughs> we have the place where none shall disturb. These things that have been granted to us shall not be taken from us. We have His word. We have His promise. These are the things He intends for us to have. This truth, His goodwill in His Son Christ Jesus, the knowledge of God, and every precious thing which shall endure to eternal life. Thank you, brother. Good, good things. Well spoken. Well spoken. Your comments, brother, brother Judah.